Hi, and welcome to AP Chemistry Review. It's me, Dr. V, and it's my favorite time of year. Time to go through a long free response question from a past AP Chemistry exam. Today, we're going to be going through free response question number one from the 2021 exam. I've got some tips and advice for you before we start going through the webcast. This is a long free response question, and that means it was scored out of 10 points, and it also means there are a lot of parts to this question. Before we get started, go grab your calculator, get your periodic table, and get your AP Chem formula sheet. You're going to need them. I'm going to go through each part in sequence, but what I want you to do is pause the video, try to do the problem on your own, and then listen to my explanation. That's really what's going to help you the most. And then you can keep track of your own score for each part. Did you earn the point or didn't you? Okay, so let's just jump right in. Methanoic acid, HCOOH, ionizes according to the equation above. And here we are. We've got the equation. Write the expression for the equilibrium constant, Ka, for the reaction. Now, this is an equilibrium constant expression, and they all follow the same essential rules. Anytime you're writing a KEQ expression, you do products over reactants. In this reaction, the products are H3O plus and HCOO minus, otherwise known as hydronium ion and methanoate ion. The reactants are the methanoic acid, HCOOH, and water. One of the things you also have to remember when you're writing any KEQ expression is that we don't include pure liquids and pure solids in the KEQ expression. And that's important because H2O in this reaction is a liquid, and so we're not going to include it in our expression. The reason for this is beyond the scope of this webcast, but go talk to your teacher if you're not sure. The other thing to remember is that the coefficients from the balanced equation become the exponents in the KEQ expression. For this reaction, all the coefficients are 1, so all the exponents will be 1. Now we're ready to go ahead and write the KEQ expression. H3O plus times HCO minus over HCOOH. That's our Ka expression. It's a Ka expression because it's a weak acid. Pro tip, make sure that you include the ion charges for the hydronium ion and the methanoate ion. If you don't have those ion charges, you're actually writing a different species and that's technically not correct. So don't make those little errors. Very avoidable. This part was scored out of one point. You got one point if you wrote a correct Ka expression. The next part of the question says, calculate the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of methanoic acid. This is a classic problem type and one that AP Chemistry students need to be able to do when they're half asleep. That's how important they are. I'm not exaggerating. Let's think about our strategy here. An ice table is really the way to go. I have initial concentrations. I want to know what's going on at equilibrium. Ice tables are the way. Here's the basic layout of our ice table. I for initial, C for the change, E for equilibrium. I've got a column for methanoic acid. I've got a column for hydronium ion. I've got a column for the methanoate. Initially, the HCOOH concentration was 0.25 molar. We're going to assume that the contribution of H3O plus from liquid water is so small that it's negligible, we'll start with zero, and that there wasn't any methanoate ion in the pure water at the beginning. So that's the initial concentrations of our solution. In order to establish equilibrium, I need to use up some of my reactants and make products. I need to proceed in the forward direction. So the concentration of HCOOH is going to drop by x. The concentration of hydronium is going to go up by x. And the concentration of the HCOO minus ion is going to go up by x. Everything's in a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's minus x and plus x. We put these together to come up with the equilibrium row of our table. So it would be 0.25 minus x for HCOOH, x for the hydronium ion, x for HCOO minus ion. Sounds good, right? I do want to point out to you the magnitude of the Ka value, which we were given. I want to point out that it's a really, really small number, and that is relevant because it allows us to avoid using the quadratic equation. I don't know about you. Personally, if I can get around using it, I will. If I can use an approximation method, I'm going to take advantage of that here, and I can, and I'm going to. Because the Ka value is small, small being on the order of 10 to the minus fourth or smaller, we can assume that the change in the initial concentration of the methanoic acid is negligible. Then we can assume that X is less than 5% of that initial methanoic acid concentration. In other words, I can say that 0.25 minus X is approximately 0.25. And I'm going to make that approximation because I don't want to do the quadratic equation. If you've got a quadratic equation solver in your graphing calculator, more power to you. Go for it. 
but it's not necessary on the AP exam. You can use this approximation if you're not told that x is greater than 5%. So our next step is to use the Ka expression that we wrote in part a and solve for x. So we've got our Ka expression. We have our equilibrium rows, and we're going to just put those values in. So x for H3O plus, x for HCO minus, and 0.25 for the methanoic acid. I'm going to substitute those in. I'm going to rearrange. I'm going to solve for x. So x works out to be 6.7 times 10 to the minus third molar. I didn't write the unit in, but it is a molarity. And that's equal to the hydronium ion concentration. Why does that matter? Because if we know the hydronium ion concentration, we can use that to solve for the pH, and that's our next step. The pH is defined as the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, which we just found. We'll substitute that value in, and we get a value for the pH of 2.17, and that's our final answer. I do want to point out that since the concentration of hydronium ion we knew to two sig figs, we know the pH to two sig figs, and the way pHs work is that only digits after the decimal are significant, so we're going to record our pH two digits after the decimal place. Now in terms of scoring part B, it was worth two points altogether. One point was for finding the concentration of the hydronium ion. Now you didn't technically have to write out the ice table. The ice table is a means to an end, but I really recommend it. Once we've got the hydronium ion concentration, the second point was for using it to find the pH of the methanoic acid solution, 2.17. It's a multi-part problem. It just keeps rolling along. In the box below, complete the Lewis electron dot diagram for HCOOH. Show all bonding and non-bonding valence electrons. Very important. Got to show all those lone pairs. What's our strategy? The first thing you really want to do is determine the total number of valence electrons in the molecule. We only care about valence electrons. They're the only ones that get involved in bonding. So the carbon has four valence electrons. There are two oxygens, each of them bringing six valence electrons, and two hydrogen atoms, each of them bringing one valence electron. That gives us a total of 18 valence electrons in the molecule. We need to make sure that when we're finished, that 18 valence electrons are represented in our Lewis structure. At this point, we're going to start drawing bonds. I always start with single bonds between everything. I make sure everyone's got a tets, and then I make sure I've got all my electrons shown. And then I count. I double check and count a lot. So let's put some single bonds in between hydrogen and carbon, between carbon and oxygen, between oxygen and hydrogen. Oh, yeah, maybe we should bond that carbon to that other oxygen too. What do you think? I think that sounds like a good idea. That gives me eight of my electrons. I've got 10 left to go. and Nobody has an octet, although the hydrogens are satisfied. So I can put a double bond between the carbon and that top oxygen. And then if I give lone pairs, two lone pairs to each of my oxygens, they'll have an octet. I want to remind you, carbon and oxygen always obey the octet rule. Nitrogen and fluorine do too, but they're not in this molecule. And therefore, we can give everybody an octet by giving two lone pairs to each oxygen. And if I count electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 electrons are accounted for, and this is a valid Lewis structure. And the Lewis structure, quite frankly, you should be drawing for this molecule. In terms of scoring, this part was worth one point for a valid Lewis structure that follows all the rules. So far, it's been pretty reasonable. It's about to take a turn towards more complication. In aqueous solution, the compound H2N NH2 reacts according to the equation above. And I want to take a moment and explore this equation a little bit because it's got some relevant information. H2N NH2 here is acting as a base. Water is acting as the acid, donating an H plus ion to H2N NH2 and forming H2N NH3 plus. Notice how that ionizable hydrogen has attached to the nitrogen end of the molecule and I'm generating a hydroxide ion as well. It's acting as a base, and we're given a Kb value for this reaction. H2N NH2 is a weak base. It's conjugate acid. It's H2N NH3+, and that's going to be a helpful thing to remember. Now we're going to get into the actual problem. A 50 mL sample of 0.25 molar H2N NH2 is combined with a 50 mL sample of 0.25 molar HCOOH. We're still not even at the question yet. We're just figuring out what's going on. Finally, a question, write the balanced net ionic equation for the reaction that occurs when H2N and H2 is combined with methanoic acid. What I want you to remember is H2N and H2 is a weak base. That's what we were just talking about with that reaction that I highlighted in lilac. And HCOOH is a weak 
monoprotic acid. Yes, there are two hydrogens in it, but only one of them is going to dissociate and be given away. So the weak acid, HCOOH, will donate its ionizable hydrogen to the base, to the H2N and H2, and make the conjugate acid of our weak base. And so here's our balanced equation. HCOOH plus H2N and H2 makes HCOO minus, which is the conjugate base of methanoic acid, and H2N and H3 plus, which is the conjugate acid of H2N and H2. Now I do want to point out one more thing before I go on to the next slide. I have a 50 mL sample of a 0.25 molar solution of the weak base. And if you look at the solution of the weak acid that we're adding, notice I'm adding the same volume and the same concentration. That's an important clue. Oh, I forgot to mention the scoring. This reaction, this part of the problem was worth one point for writing a correct balanced equation. And it was really all or nothing. Either it was correct or it wasn't. And of course, there's another part to this problem. So we just wrote this reaction and then they go on and ask, is the resulting solution acidic, basic, or neutral? Justify your answer. And this is probably the trickiest part of this problem right here. We need to really have a strategy. And the key is recognizing that this is a neutralization reaction too. I have my weak acid, I have my weak base, I had equal volumes and equal molarities of each. So the only thing left in solution are the HCOO minus and the H2N and H3 plus. That's what's left in solution. And so the HCOO minus, you might remember, is the conjugate base of our weak acid methanoic acid. And H2N and H3 plus, it's quite the mouthful, is the conjugate acid of our weak base H2N and H2. And that's what we've got left in solution, just these two guys. So the key to working this problem out is remembering that for a conjugate pair, the Ka of the weak acid times the Kb of its conjugate base equals Kw, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. And this relationship is on your formula sheet. But in order to answer this question, we need to find the Kb for the HCOO minus, and we need to find the Ka for the H2N and H3 plus using this relationship. So let's go ahead and do that. The calculations are actually really quick to do. We know that the Kb for HCOO minus would be Kw over the Ka of methanoic acid. Now we had that a long time ago, at the very beginning of the problem, back in part A. But we do have that value for Ka. So we can find the Kb for HCOO minus. We can do the division, all right, and we get a value of Kb of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11th, which is a pretty small number. I would say HCOO minus is not very good at being a weak base. We're going to do the same kind of process for the H2N and H3 plus. We're going to find its Ka value. We know Kw. We know it's Kb. It's right up at the top of the slide. We're going to substitute that in. And we get a value for Ka for H2N and H3 plus, which is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 9th. But we need to compare the Ka and Kb values. One of them is better than the other. The key is that 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 9th is a larger value than 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11th. In other words, H2N and H3 is better at being a weak acid than HCOO minus is at being a weak base. Therefore, the resulting solution is acidic, all right, because the one with the bigger K value is better at doing its job. So H2N and H3 plus wins the tug of war here and the solution ends up being acidic. Before I go on, I do want to point out that this part was worth one point. One point if you had the correct answer and you had to justify it appropriately. You had to realize the relative values of the Kb and Ka's and use them here. Just guessing isn't enough. You have to have the correct answer and an appropriate justification. Here's part E of the problem. When a catalyst is added to a solution of methanoic acid, HCOOH, the reaction represented by the following equation occurs. HCOOH undergoes a reaction to produce hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas. Is the reaction a redox reaction? Justify your answer. Wait a minute, I thought this was an acid base question. This is the college board. You know they're going to switch gears on you in the middle. You've got to be ready for that. So think about how you're going to answer that. The key is to assign oxidation numbers to all the atoms in all three molecules. 
And in order to answer the question, we need to know, do any of the atoms change oxidation numbers? That's the hallmark of a redox reaction. So let's go assign those oxidation numbers. If you don't remember the rules, I've got a whole webcast on that. Hydrogen in a compound is almost always plus one. Oxygen in a compound, usually minus two. The sum of the oxidation numbers in any compound has to be zero. So I've, I've got two pluses and four minuses. So the carbon has to be plus two to make this work. So that's my methanoic acid. In hydrogen, it's an element. Any element has an oxidation number of zero. So the two hydrogens in hydrogen gas have an oxidation number of zero. And then we've got CO2. We know oxygens in a compound are usually minus two. There are two of them. And that means the carbon has to have an oxidation number of plus four in order for the oxidation numbers to work properly in CO2. Did anybody change? They sure did. So we can see the hydrogen in methanoic acid going from plus one to zero in hydrogen gas. And we can see that the carbon in methanoic acid goes from plus two to plus four. Either one of these would be sufficient. But the answer is yes, yes, it's redox. I can use one of these statements to back up my answer. I've got my oxidation numbers, clearly they change, and that's the key. It's a one point problem. One for the correct answer with an appropriate justification, which would here rely on oxidation numbers. Now we're going to go on to part F. The reaction occurs in a rigid 4.3 liter vessel at 25 degrees Celsius. And the total pressure is monitored as shown in the graph above. Well, I put it down below. The vessel did not originally contain any gas. Calculate the number of moles of CO2 produced in the reaction. Assume that the amount of CO2 gas dissolved in the solution is negligible. So we're assuming it's all going into the gas phase. So what's our strategy here? Well, it's the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. We have a volume, we have a pressure, we have a temperature, we can calculate moles. Ah, but there's a twist. We need to be careful. If we look at the graph, that's the total pressure. Let's think about that reaction, though, that was occurring. We knew the methanoic acid would decompose to form hydrogen gas and CO2. I'm making two gases, and I'm making these two gases in a one-to-one -one ratio. In other words, the total pressure that I'm measuring here is the total pressure exerted by the two gases, the pressure of the hydrogen and the pressure of the CO2. And the fact that they react in a one-to-one -one ratio means that their pressures are equal to each other. All right, the pressure of the hydrogen equals the pressure of the CO2, and that's what we want to know. In other words, the total pressure is equal to twice that of the CO2. Or you can think of it as the pressure of the CO2 is half of the total pressure. So you don't necessarily have to write all of this out, but you do have to come to this realization as you're doing the problem. And since the total pressure was about 24 atmospheres, that means the pressure due to the CO2 must be about 12 atmospheres. And now we can go into the ideal gas law and do that calculation. So we know PV equals nRT, we're solving for moles. I always like to rearrange my equation before I substitute in. It's my recommendation, do what you will. We know the pressure is 12 atmospheres for just the CO2. We know the volume is 4.3 liters. We've got the temperature in Celsius. We need to convert that into Kelvin. Substitute that in. Of course, we're going to use the R value. You look it up on your formula sheet. And since our pressures in atmospheres, I'm using the R value that involves liters and atmospheres and moles in Kelvin, 0.08206. I stuff everything in. I'm going to substitute and evaluate. And I get a value of N of 2.1 moles of CO2. I'm allowed two sig figs, so that's how I reported my answer. In terms of scoring part F, this part was worth two points. One point for realizing that the pressure of the CO2 is about 12 atmospheres, however you got there. Even if you didn't explicitly show it and you just ended up using it later in the problem. And then the other point was for successfully solving for the number of moles of CO2. So you could not get both points here if you didn't realize that the CO2 pressure was 12 atmospheres. Part G. After the reaction has proceeded for several minutes, does the amount of catalysts increase, decrease, or remain the same? Justify your answer. Well, if you think about the definition of a catalyst, if you think back to your kinetics unit, the hallmark of a catalyst is you get it back in its original form at the end of the reaction. The amount of the catalyst would be the same. They're not consumed over the course of the reaction. We get it back. That's essentially what you needed to say to earn the point for part G. In terms of the scoring for part G, it was one point for a correct answer with a justification. 
This is what I sometimes refer to as a kitchen sink problem. It's got a lot of different topics. It started with acid base equilibria, and then it switched to redox, and then suddenly it was gases, and then, oh, let's throw in a little kinetics at the end too. So a very challenging problem. You really have to be ready to shift gears when you're doing these long free response problems. They're not going to stay on a single topic. I asked you to keep score of your work as you went along. How did you do? Well, in 2021, the average score in this question was 3.93 out of 10. So the, it, it's a fairly reasonable question, not particularly difficult, um, pretty typical average score uh, compared to what we've seen in past years. So if you were able to get four points on this question, you're doing well. If you got five or above, kudos to you and you're in really good shape. I'm going to be making more review videos. I'm going to be very busy, so I recommend that you subscribe to my channel so you can get all my latest updates and I can walk you through other problems. Take care. Good night. Keep studying chemistry.